practice. And she used to take her kids walking down, up and down the street. You know, she was very good with her kids. She was very good, very good mother. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Ellie. My name is Ivy. And today we'll make yeast bread. I'm going to be using raspberries. I am going to use raisins. So we're making our own yeast today because? Because stores are mostly out of yeast. We are following breaking news at noon. Five people are following a house fire in Ferguson. Right now, investigators are there looking for the cause of that fire. Anyone who has lived long enough knows that in life, sometimes you hit a rough patch and things don't always go as planned. The future that you have envisioned for yourself may not end up being the perfect way you saw it. Sometimes, no matter how much we plan and try to do things the right way, life definitely has a way of throwing us some hard balls. In today's story, we'll take a look at a family that seemed to have a beautiful life, but behind that mother's smile was a sad truth. As reported by the family, 39-year-old Bernadine Presner was said to be facing fictional legal proceedings and unconfirmed allegations by her ex-husband and her former boyfriend. With the alleged mounted pressure she was said to be receiving from her ex, it is understood that it all became too much. Bernadine reached a very unpleasant place, one that resulted in a tragic conclusion. 39-year-old Bernadine Presner was from St. Louis, Missouri and grew up in the St. Louis, Missouri metropolitan area. Bernadine, who went by Birdie, was born on December 14, 1985. And as a teen, she attended Eureka Senior High School and graduated with the class of 2003. She would go on to further her education and obtain multiple degrees and was a dedicated educator and a former Missouri Teacher of the Year. Her teaching certificate covered various fields, including agriculture, elementary education, English language arts, early childhood education, and family and consumer science. So as you can see, Bertie was well-educated and held a Master's of Education, a Master's of Business Administration degree and was in the process of obtaining her doctorate in early childhood education as well. She was currently working as an assistant professor at Lewis and Clark Community College in Godfrey, Illinois. She was said to be very passionate about education and had over a decade of classroom experience. She also had a passion for agriculture and was the founder of a nonprofit organization called the Root Cause Agriculture Education Group. As a part of that, she was also an urban farmer emphasizing sustainable practices and education related to agriculture. While pursuing her dreams, Bertie became a wife to David Presner, and the couple would have two kids, twin daughters, Ellie and Ivy Presner, in March of 2014. However, just a few short years later, the couple would get a divorce, and she would begin dating Jared Spader. The pair had two kids, a son, Jackson Spader, and then a daughter, Millie Spader. Jared and Bertie never married and would ultimately end their relationship. Now, as a single mother of four, Bertie wanted nothing more than to focus on the happiness of her children and was said to be trying to do that. Sadly, it was said that Bertie could not focus on the good in her life because her ex allegedly banned together to try to make life harder through the court system. According to court records, when Bertie requested to relocate closer to her ex-husband's residence as her younger children became school age, her ex-husband filed a motion to prevent the relocation. Her ex-boyfriend, who allegedly had not even established legal rights to his children, joined Bertie's former husband to prevent relocation as well. Along with those motions, there was alleged allegations and requests to change or diminish Bertie's capacity as a woman and mother, according to Bertie's family. She saw her children being used by their fathers as a way to hurt her, and she viewed the process for resolution through the court as inconvenient, tedious, and never-ending, according to the family as well. Each day that Bertie was said to score a step forward, her ex-husband and her ex-boyfriend would undertake an action to belittle or undermine her role as a mother. Her ex-husband and former boyfriend were said to be fully funded by their incomes and assets and allegedly were not willing to follow the rules when it came to trying to destroy Bertie, according to the family. It was said that Bertie's spirit succumbed to the intolerable demanding process. She said her children slowly and steadily suffered. She viewed the children as being used by their fathers as a means to hurt her at their expense. Tragically, she made the wrong choice. Bertie was fiercely independent, rejected her family's support, and accepted only their love, according to them. 
The family believed that Bertie would never have gotten to that place without the unending attacks of her ex and her ex-husband. The whole thing came to a head for Bertie on Monday, February 19, 2024, but she low-key left some subliminals that week prior. On February 15, Bertie shared a post that read, You never truly know the depths of what a person may be going through, what their heart may be grieving, and what their body may be carrying, and what their soul may be longing for. So stay kind-hearted and open-minded. On February 18th, that morning, she would post, making today one of those live each day like it's your last kind of days. Breakfast, reptile shows, soccer game, and living room camp out is on the agenda, plus whatever other shenanigans brings us joy. Happy Sunday. Thank God the sun is shining. The same day and night, Bertie would post, us against the world. I'm so blessed to be their mama. They have a heart for the Lord and have overcome so much more in their little lives than they should have ever had to face. Then her last post, late in that night, Bertie said, all my kids peacefully sleeping in my bed, curled up together, knowing they are loved so fiercely that I'll do absolutely anything for them. This is my favorite moment. However, tragically, just a few hours later, her house will go up in flames with the whole family inside. An update to that breaking news we brought to you about the house fire in Ferguson. We now have an update from Fox News' Laura Simon, who is live on the scene. Laura, what can you tell us? Ty, we just got a pretty grim update here. There was a house fire at this home behind me earlier this morning, and we do know St. Louis County police are taking over this investigation. According to the official reports, firefighters responded to a call at a family home in Ferguson, Missouri, on Monday, February 19th. Upon arrival, they discovered the lifeless body of four children inside the home. Their mother, Birdie's body, will be found a short time later. The preliminary investigation revealed that Bertie intentionally set a mattress on fire, which served as the point of origin for the deadly blaze. Just moments ago, the family confirmed to us that 39-year-old Bernadine Prusner and her four children were inside of the home at the time of the fire. And the family says they just saw their daughter last night while having dinner. Now, family tells us that the children were two-year-old Millie Jackson Spader, six-year-old Jackson Spader, nine-year-old twin girls Ellie and Ivy Prusner. St. Louis County Police say this all started at 4.30 this morning. That's when a neighbor called investigators about a fire at the home and the fire. 500 block of North Clay Avenue. Police initially found four people inside of the home, and then a short time later, they found a fifth person along with three dogs that had died. The Ferguson Police Department called in the St. Louis County Bureau of Crimes Against Persons to lead the investigation. Neighbors I spoke to today say the mother loved her children. There was a note left behind by Birdie indicating her intentions to take her life and the life of her four littles. This is just beyond tragic, and our family was so beloved by the community. Vigil was held for that young family earlier tonight, just down the street from their home. Fox 2's Max Deaknight joins us live at Jeske Park. And Max, neighbors say they are heartbroken over this tragedy. Yeah, Mandy, neighbors say they are absolutely stunned after this early morning fire. People who showed up at the vigil tonight at the park right behind us, some of them knew the victims, other only, others only knew the family in passing, but everyone who showed up here tonight says that this family, they were young, they were a ray of light in this community, and they will be sorely missed. A time to mourn and pray. So we just pray for this family and those that are left here and this community. A vigil Monday for Bernadine Prusner and her four young children. Neighbors, first responders, and total strangers showing up to pay their respects. Melissa Holst knew the family. She was the most loving mother, friend, teacher that anyone has ever met. She loved her kids more than anything in the world. She was the sweetest, nicest lady. She cared for her animals and the community and her children. Neighbor Tammy Norton worked to rescue the family's extensive pet collection Monday afternoon, including 14 rabbits, three chickens and two cats. Police are investigating this fire and what happened to this young family. But if there really is a time for everything, back at the vigil, neighbors say Monday was a time for mourning. They'll never be able to be replaced. Nobody will ever forget them. And I just, we all wish that nothing like this would have ever happened. One loved one wrote, I have been trying to find the words to express the sadness I have for the loss of Bertie Dorville. We have private talks about the injustice of the family court system and our experience in these systems perpetuating harm and control in situations where protection was warranted. 
The family court system is a place in this country that are dangerous for women and children in bad situations. Bertie and I had parallel in our life's journey in this way. Her suffering was endless and she fought two men whom she had children with that teamed up together in utilizing the family court system to steal her well-being financially, mentally, and spiritually as a mother. I will never understand the true darkness she faced as this final season of her life ended along with the lives of her littles and animals. But I know without a shadow of a doubt for her, there had to have been a mountain ahead of her that she truly couldn't climb. I am devastated for the loss. Bertie and her children were a beautiful light to this world. Questions remain about how things got to this point. First Lord 4 Investigates found court records showing a family in the middle of a contentious custody battle. Investigator Susan L. Corey is learning more about this and joins us with an update. Susan. Well, Corey, we've been reading through dozens of court records. What you see here are just some of them. There's many more. These involve Bernadine Prusner and the dad of her two oldest children. They give a glimpse into the back and forth between parents and their children caught in the middle. First Alert 4 Investigates is learning more about an ongoing custody fight with the father of Prusner's twin daughters. Years of court records going back to their 2017 divorce show a tug of war over custody. In filings, Prusner claimed dad used their daughter. He fought back saying it's unfounded and said Prusner was emotionally and physically abused to their child. He also accused her of posting about it on social media. Both parents were court ordered to do co-parenting counseling and individual therapy. The latest filings, which started last year, continuing days before the murders, shows the twins' dad asking for full custody. He says Prusner moving the kids to Creevecourt is detrimental to the twins' well-being and safety because the home is owned by Prusner's mother, who he claims has a mental illness and refuses to get treatment. Prusner responded, saying he's a petulant ex-husband. Bertie loved ones also put out a statement that read, As we mourn the loss of Bertie and her cherished children, we kindly request that you keep the family and friends in your thoughts and prayers. Together, let us unite in compassion and support the negative through their difficult journey and healing. Tragically, the life of a wonderful mother and a brilliant educator and her four beautiful children were lost this week. This story is just all around sad. Sad that she saw no other way out and sad that she thought doing what she did was the best answer. My thoughts and prayers are surely with this family and all who love Bertie and her beautiful children. Please let me know your thoughts on this situation. And please don't forget to pray for all the people affected by this horrible tragedy. Also hit that like button and share to make your people aware. And as always, remember to stay woke. Things change quickly.